You know, I've just spent about 20 minutes fighting with the light now that the clocks have changed. And it's taken me that long to realise that if I open up this cupboard, you won't get a reflection of that light on that glass. Welcome! <laughs> and welcome to the November 21 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name is Leslie. This is a podcast recorded on the south coast of England and it's all about yarny stuff. So knitting, crochet, spinning, occasionally weaving. Haven't done that for a while. If we can try it with yarn, we'll have a go. So welcome everyone. If you're a new reviewer or you're returning, thank you so much for being here. It's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast because this is, in theory, my attempt at working through my stash. So you can see two cupboards behind me. There's another one over there. Boxes. There, there's a fair amount of it. But you'll see later in the episode, in a short while, why I say in theory. I record throughout the month and then do it kind of vlog style as I've got something to record and then I post on the last weekend of the month. I also do a weekly vlog, Not Quite Enough Distance, and that goes up every Friday, five o'clock UK time. So obviously time zones apply. Whenever I'm wearing something hand knitted, I will put the details in the notes below. So for example, this is based on Floof by Ellie of Skein Deer Knits. Now Floof is a sweater that is made holding mohair and uh, four ply fingering weight yarn together. Obviously this is a cardigan and it's not remotely floofy and that probably tells you a lot of what you need to know about what I do to patterns. I do modify them quite a bit or quite regularly I should say. Um, not always but usually. So yes, I do modify quite a bit. I hopefully explain all my modifications and the reasons why. And a lot of it is personal taste. So I'm not someone, for example, who likes um, baggy sleeves. So I might really like a sweater design, but if the sleeves are quite loose or they have kind of bouffant style with a tight cup, I am I'm more likely to taper the sleeves because that's my personal taste in how I wear things. So so those are the sorts of modifications I make, which I will go through as and how required. Now I said in theory, because I don't buy yarn, but people buy yarn for me. And I like them very much when they do that. That is extremely kind of them. And my husband, otherwise known as himself, goes away and often buys yarn when he's away for me because he's a sweetheart. So earlier this month he was uh, in Brighton so he popped into Yak, the knitting shop there, and bought me two items of yarn for which he is an absolute love. So this first one, and those colours are coming up relatively accurately, this is Salba Ball Crazy by Shuffle. So beautiful blues, blues towards the purple end and then back towards the teals. So very much my palette, which is in complete contrast to what I'm wearing at the moment because all colours are my palette really. But um, but yes, very much like these colours. So he got me that and he also, because he is a sweetie, got me this beautiful yarn. Uh, that's showing up a little orangey. It's more orangey, is that a word? Um, it's more of a kind of wine red. It's by The Uncommon Thread. It's their everyday sport based base in their Lust colourway. Hello. Um, <laughs> why I said that. So this is 300 metres per 100 grams and it's 100% superwash merino wool. So these buttes came from Yak in Brighton courtesy of himself. He's a good lad. We'll keep him. He can stay. So that's that's very kind of him. In addition to that, I had a message from a lovely lady who had been to the Glasgow School of Yarns, so a yarn festival in Glasgow, asking if she could send me stuff. 
which was very very kind of her and goodness she did send me stuff I was um, somewhat staggered to open this parcel because we had within it first of all this lovely yarn so this is from Celia McWheely and this is the uh, slub base as you can tell beautiful colours in here from whites through purples with splashes of hot pink uh, bits of blue just really lovely it is 90% superwash Peruvian merino and 10% nylon 400 meters per 100 grams in the balloons colorway just gorgeous and this lovely lady as well as sending me this yarn she said she had a fantastic time at the Glasgow School of Yarn one day I like Glasgow very much I've been for a while but I might try and uh, might try and visit when that event's on she also um, sent me the Noro magazine. This is Noro 19, I think. Yeah. And regular viewers will know that I love a bit of Noro. And there are some fabulous patterns in here. And there are a couple that I'm going to point out. Now, I do like this one on this side here. So you've got this slightly... Got a, you know it's largely plain apart from the fact that you have this v-shaped panel working down through the front and I rather like that that's very pleasant and also there's a wrap that um, I seem to have lost the marker for no I haven't which is very impressive well there are a couple of wraps so this one is in quite sort of muted colors for Noro. This is by Jeannie Chin and very sensible colours for Noro but a rather lovely big squishy wrap and I am very taken by this hexagonal wrap and as far as I can tell the pieces are made individually and then sewn together which is a bit of a faff I know but it does then make it a very portable project and I have a, a blanket on my spare bed which is made up largely of hexagons and they were my car project for quite some time so if I was waiting for an appointment um, I had that in the car it was small it was easy to remember so I just made these and then joined them together as and when I could so yes that's that wrap and it's rather fabulous well, this lovely lady didn't stop there because she bought me sweeties. <laughs> we have here some uh, Blondie S'mores fudge. Well, frankly, what's not to like? It's a heavy old bag of it as well. And some chocolate. So some Cadbury Dairy Milk and some Ferrero Rocher. So... Again, to this lovely lady, I say thank you. That is so very kind of you. It is much appreciated. And yes, I'm spoiled. <sighs> A few little makes on the go at the moment, so I will um, show you those once they're done. And I'll see you later in the month. Thanks. Hello lovelies, I'm at a slight angle, I hope that's not too off-putting. Um, I don't know if I said in the admin or not that I record in different places when I record throughout the month. So at the moment I'm in the car, in a lay-by, between appointments, doing some knitting. And uh, also I forgot to say about the make-along. All year I've been running a make-along with the fabulous Kelly Ann of the Yarn Tales by the Sea podcast and it's an accessory make along so any accessory that can be worn on the person hats socks scarves shawls bags if a person can wear it it counts and open to all crafts um, knitting crochet weaving whatever feels the right thing for you then it's applicable to take part it's an entry on Ravelry 
and I am aware that some folks are having difficulties using Ravelry for various reasons. If you are unable to use Ravelry, please email me at notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com with your entry and I will add it to the post. So I'll add it to the forum rather. So you hopefully don't have to miss out if you're not able to use Ravelry, certainly on the finished object thread. Now there are two threads, Kelly and I, Kellyanne and I are both running this in the same way. So within our groups on Ravelry, we have two threads. There's a finished object thread, and that's a no chatter thread. So when you put your picture up of your finished object, by all means, uh, say a bit about it, what the pattern is, who it's for, what the yarn is those kind of things uh, but it's been set up so that people can't respond to the picture on that one that's no chatter but you can certainly put the same details onto the chatter thread and folks are able to respond so tell you how much they love it love the colors they've also made that pattern whatever it is folks want to say so both of those threads are running please be a member of the group if you're taking part and yeah, look forward to seeing the entries. There are some fabulous pieces on there. We ran a, a different mal last year and my queue increased considerably. Same thing this year, so much inspiration on there. So thank you to everyone who's been taking part. Prizes, they are drawn quarterly on the chatter thread. The prize is a pattern up to a value of $10 US. And that's just a random number generator draw. And on the finished object thread, it's a physical prize. So yarn, a bag, something of that nature, um, that's, that's on offer. And again, random number generator. So the more accessories you make, the more entries you have. So it's very, we tried to keep it as open to everyone and as straightforward as possible. So the next draw will be in December. Well, actually, I'll probably do it in January so that I can encompass all of December. And also in January, I'll be doing a, a draw for the year. So again, there'll be a chatter thread draw and a finished object thread draw. So good luck. Thank you for being part of it. Um, even if you're not making accessories, being in a mall isn't of interest. If you're looking for pattern ideas, it's a good place to look because there's lots of gorgeous stuff there. So, so yes, that's all good. Um, I think that's all the admin, considering I completely forgot about it when I recorded the other day. Oh, there's a large lorry coming past now. It's all glamour, the life of a celebrant, you know. I say celebrant, I'm assuming you all know what I do for a living. I conduct funerals which is why I wear a lot of black and sit in my car a lot. Um, so this morning, for example, I've visited a family, found out details of what they'd like in their ceremony, and I have a funeral this afternoon, and it's sufficient distance that it's too far away to, um, to go home and have any time at home. If the dog was there on her own, I would go home, let her out in the garden, give her a cuddle, and then come away again. But himself's there. So I'm going to sit here listening to an audiobook and knitting instead. It's not a bad life. I'm not complaining. <laughs> so yeah, keep well everyone and I will be back again soon. Cheers. Hello lovelies. I have small things to show you. Baby things. Um, someone I know is due to have a baby around Christmas time. So I'm going to send the blanket that I showed last month, the circular one, and I've also made a few accessories. Um, this mum-to-be wants gender neutral colours, so I found what I hope she will like. Hang on, I'm missing a mitt. They're pesky little things, they get everywhere. There it is, hello. <laughs> so... Uh, I think some of these are patterns I've used before, so uh, previous viewers of previous episodes will recognise them. But we have a little pair of mitts. These are the Jack and Jill mitts by Mariana Mel. I'll put all the links below. I think these are all free patterns, uh, but they may be Ravelry links, so I'll I'll put all the details below. So that's the first item. 
The next is a little beanie, which is the Best Baby Beanie by Danielle Meyer. And then these cuties. They're so sweet. Are the Nor to Six Months Baby Booties by Priscilla Ulohu, whose patterns are under the name of Erica and Eleanor. So I will put all the links below. They all took kind of oddments of double knitting. It's just a fairly generic acrylic double knitting that was part of the stash. And in total, these three items... Oh, that looks weird. Hello. Um, <laughs> oh, I should stop making myself laugh. Um, these three items, I think it was about 147 metres altogether, so a nice little set. Now, I did realise about three minutes ago when I was double checking the details that there is a newborn size for these as well. So baby's going to have hats and booties that fit for longer than mitts, but um, working on the theory that babies will probably lose them fairly quickly anyway, because that's what babies do, then... Um, We'll live with that. So these patterns all very simple. Um, this I worked flat and seamed. I can't remember if the pattern is in the round or seamed, but um, I decided to seam it. It was just easier for because of the size of needle I was working on. I'm not a DPN fan. I'm a magic looper, but it then gets to the point of you're only working on a small number of needles uh, stitches. Um, it can get a little bit. Um, a bit awkward to operate so so they were seamed these were seamed and the booties were knit flat as well so all really straightforward patterns very quick very easy little gifts and I was showing some friends the things I had made and one of my friends has a, a new grandson who has trouble keeping things on his feet and I was saying about the incredibly long cuff on the baby booties and she said, oh, 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 so she was very excited. Sorry, she didn't say it all like that at all. I'm sorry, Belinda, you're perfectly more coherent than that. Um, but I've made these little baby booties for him to try. And if they're any good, then I'll make him some more. And if I do make him some more, I'll make his big brother something as well, because I don't like to make for one child and not another. But um, these are the, the prototype, if you will. So... <laughs> I'll get them in the post to her and she can try them on the baby and see if they stay on better. And again, these are just made out of some baby double knitting, fairly kind of um, bog standard acrylic sort of yarn you'd find anywhere, but washable, durable, doesn't matter if they get slung in the mud because they can go in the washing machine, that type of thing which I always think for new parents is, is far, far more practical than a lot of other choices. So that's that. And that's them. More to follow. Cheers. Hello, lovelies. I've got all the lights on in the hope that uh, we kind of counterbalance the light coming in from the sun. So I hope it's all OK. Um, I have two finished objects to show you. And the fact that I'm wearing my pure fuzz, which I made last year out of scraps plied with um, some plain grey yarn, shows you it's quite a chilly day. With chilliness in mind, I have here a Christmas gift for my sister-in-law. And these will be some slipper socks. Yes, for someone who never makes socks, I've made a lot recently. It's the way it goes. It's the way it goes. Now, the pattern was very kindly given to me. Checking I've got the right piece of paper. Yes, I have. Um, by Nikki. So the pattern is from Nikki Knits. This is Nicole Stuckless and she got in touch and said she wanted to offer me one of her patterns as a belated birthday present. So thank you very much Nikki and it really was a question of the universe providing because um, I was looking to make some slipper socks, was sort of just thinking about patterns and then this butte came along which is an Aran weight sock. Now Nikki is Canadian uh, Newfoundland I believe and we know that Canada can get very chilly in the winter hence the need for very thick socks. Um, now these can be the socks or slipper socks and she suggests leather patches on the soles to make them non-slip 
if you're going for slipper socks. I have some socks stop, you know, the stuff you kind of dot on and it, it creates a non-slip surface. So that's what I'm going to use because that's what I already have. So very quick to make as um, Aaron Waite, or in this case, in my case, fingering doubled, four ply doubled. Uh, they're on regular sock blockers because they're for someone with regularly sized feet. That's my sister-in-law. And the yarns are, colours will be familiar if you watched the episode a few months ago, a couple of weeks ago. So the pink is Berger de France Luberon. This grey is not the grey I used in my previous socks. This is Sweet Merino, sorry, Sweet Fibre Yarns Sweet Merino Light, uh, which I came by in a swap. And then the cream is Knitting Goddess UK Sock, which is uh, British wool and nylon. So four ply British wool and nylon. So all of them are four ply or fingering weight, held double, which then gave me the opportunity to have this slightly mild effect. So I did six rows of the pink, six rows pink and grey together, six rows of the grey. And when I talk about the colour on its own, I mean two strands together. And then six rows of the grey and cream, and then just cream all the way to the rest of the foot. So it's a top down pattern, heel flap and gusset. Um, I didn't make any major modifications. I made the toes slightly shorter. Um, I just felt it was a better look for what I was achieving with gauge and so forth. So, um, so yes, I need to block these. I need to block these to attach the non-sticky, non-slip stuff. And then wrap them and give them to my sister-in-law. So I hope that she likes them. Um, we bought her some slipper socks some years ago. We went into somewhere like Next and got them. She'd, she'd said, you know, we'd said, what would you like? And she'd given that as a suggestion. And when I saw my brother-in-law a few weeks ago, I said, does she still wear them? Yes, she does. Well, then she'll have some more. The ones we bought her were cream and they were at her request. Because personally, I wouldn't have cream slipper socks. But I'm a mucky pup. And she isn't. <laughs> so, so yes, for me this would not be a practical colour, but for her that's that's what she likes. So that's what she's got. So I hope that she likes them. Obviously as they're a gift and a surprise I wasn't able to um, measure her foot, but there is a bit of flex in here. So a bit of stretch if needed. Um, I'm pretty sure we bought medium uh, slipper socks when we got them a few years ago so medium is what I've gone for the sock the pattern does come in a range of sizes and this is them so a uh, very easy to remember knit and purl pattern and thank you again Nikki for the pattern your timing was impeccable and I thank you for it in terms of yarn used um, overall I used 410 meters but don't forget I was using four ply weight doubled so it would be roughly 200 205 meters if you were using Aran weight as per the pattern so there we go so a Christmas gift done it's a bit organized isn't it now we're on to a very colorful thing I've been feeling with my crafting um and you know we all go through phases where we I say we all dreadful generalization many of us go through phases where we want to cast on all the things and there's a kind of restlessness and we want to have several different things on the go and usually that's me uh, but just recently I really felt like I wanted to finish this particular item so I'm gonna stop talking about it for a minute but just hold it up so you can see its glorious colorful wonderness And I'm hoping that also gave you a sense of the size of this butte because it is slightly bigger than my wingspan and I'm about five feet six. So it's a nice big one. If you're going to have one, have a big one. And this is the Ritual Shawl by Marceline Smith, who is Hay Brownbury. And I started it quite a while ago and it was in rotation with other patterns. And I really felt like I wanted to spend some time on it, give it some love and get it finished. And I have. 
This is mostly made of hand spun. The only exception is the plain white, which is Adriophil Avant-Garde, which is a four ply weight, fingering weight. Can't remember what the construction is. I should do better, but it's a, a plain white commercial yarn, which I thought worked well to break up the different patterns that I've got here. So these are hand spuns. They are not all the same, of course. So the main one here where you've got colour and white spun together, that's from two different fibre producers. The colour comes from Needle and Fred. Uh, they had some rainbow Rolex that I bought um, 18 months ago now, I think. It was part of a pride offering year before last. Or was it last year? Anyway, that's who it was from. They usually do yarns. I don't know that they always do fibre. I know at the time when I was showing them, someone said, well, I've looked on their site and I can't find them. So I don't know if it's a regular offering for them, but fabulous colours. And that is plied with some lap waist from Witchcrafty Lady. So this lap waist has all the soft things. It's got merino, I think it's got cashmere, all super soft and squishy stuff. So I applied the, um, sorry, I spun the needle and thread, spun the witchcrafty lady, applied them together as a two ply. I had some of the needle and thread left over. And so I chain plied that, I think, to give the intensity of the colour. And in this pattern, as you can see, you have these options for stripes and a bit of texture. Uh, the third one I made a bit of a mistake on because there should be a garter ridge either side of the eyelets. So yes, yeah, so this more intense colour is the needle and thread on its own and this bottom section before the lace edging was the last of the needle and thread on its own. This more muted but still fabulously colourful section here is fibre from Demelza's Delights and it's the No Drama Llama fibre, which has several different fibres within it, including Llama, hence the name. And yeah, just spun that and... I must have chain plied that as well. Or, no, I think I split that in two and then plied it together. That would make far more sense. <laughs> Actually, looking at the um, the needle and thread, I didn't chain ply it at all. I'm lying to you and I'm sorry. So I would have just um, spun, plied two ends together until I ran out. So that's, it's just in some of it, the colours matched in others, they, they contrasted. So <sighs> don't ask me about spinning. I'm not, I'm a newbie. <laughs> now, one of the beauties of this pattern is its adaptability, so I made a modification. Of course I did. And I was making it larger than the original pattern. And I was getting to the point where I thought I want to go wider rather than deeper. So I wanted a nice wide shawl that I could wrap around myself, but I didn't necessarily want to be sitting on the point of it. Ooh. So um, when I got to however far down that is, and this was all, you know, modifying as I went along. There was no real plan to this, as you can probably tell. So I just made an additional, basically split this increase here. So that it made this additional panel towards the shape of a Faroese. But because I was increasing both sides of this, it's more a sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. It just hangs as a, an extra frill bit of a pleat, bit of a, um, a gusset, if you will. So that's uh, one of the things I did. The other thing that's one of the beauties of this pattern is the lace edge, you work as your cast off. So start at one edge, cast on, and then work this panel sideways, and you're casting off as you go. You're taking needles from the left-hand needle taking stitches rather from the left hand needle as you go. So that meant with this uh, multicoloured yarn, I had the opportunity 
for the colours in that to grow and to change as it went along. Now I'm not going to lie, that edging takes a while as you can imagine. Totally worth it. It's beautiful, it's easy to memorise. Um, I think by the time I'd done about three or four repeats I had it in here. I didn't have to follow it too closely, I could, could work out what I was doing. And so I just plodded away at it. It did feel like it took a long time, but I had made the shawl larger. So there was a lot of edge to cast off, but totally worth it. And very happy with how it's all turned out. Now I tend to wear my shawls sort of over my shoulders, this style, but this one also works bandana style. And would be very cosy on any occasion. I have some yarn left over. I'm sorry. I can only apologise. Uh, because I had made it a larger shawl, I wasn't sure how much I would need of this, uh, this main colour for the edging. And I had some left over. Which is very unusual. In hindsight, could have made it another, you know, a few rows longer but it really doesn't matter because that will go into something else everything will get used and i am very happy with this we are going into winter it's been very gray and cold and damp and here's a bright sunny shawl so these colors make me very happy and thank you mars for writing such a lovely pattern thank you for the dyers to the dyers for creating such beautiful yarns and I have a shawl that I'm very happy with it's cozy it's not a heavy one it's you know it's four ply weight but big cozy bright rainbow what's not what's not to like that's it for this section um we are now three weeks into November as I record this um so my next section next week will include the draw for the winner of the 5k giveaway so exciting see you then hello lovelies sorry this is a bit up close and personal i'm about to do the socks stop on the bottom of um the socks slipper socks for my sister-in-law uh so i've made myself a little cardboard template to put in the underside of the foot so that uh, the socks stop <laughs> the sock stop only sticks <laughs> to the sole <laughs> and any other words beginning with s um i'm going to be doing this very carefully uh some of you may remember the great splurging accident of 2019 2018 one of those so, yes, let's see how this works, shall we? Change of plan. The socks stop, despite me putting it all away carefully, has dried solid in the tube. There is nothing to be had out of that, I'm afraid. So, um, change of plan. Which will no doubt require some going online and ordering either some puff paint or some more sock stop hmm <laughs> well hello lovelies so I've ordered some sock stop but that's not going to be here until next month so I'll show you that next month but I do have a, a finished object to show you um Last year I was talking with some friends and one of my friends made a Christmas tree skirt for her daughter and the style that her daughter wanted it was a little bit granny square folksy not the type of thing that would appeal to me as a general rule um, not that I have a problem with granny squares but I like them in blankets I'm quite fixed in that it's it's my own foible um, but I did think to myself Actually, I think I'd quite like a Christmas tree skirt because we use an artificial tree and we don't put the presents around it or underneath it 
because we have a dog and if there's anything edible in those presents at some point the dog will get in there and eat it so um we just thought it i just thought it would be nice to have uh just something to cover over the the feet at the base of the tree and i came across a pattern and I'm blaming Mandy from Mouse's Makes for this because she was talking about corner to corner crochet a while ago and how much she was enjoying it. She's made some shawls as gifts for Christmas. And I was thinking, yeah, I really like doing corner to corner. I haven't done any for a while. So thank you, Mandy. You sent me on this path. Two, two ideas colliding. And I found a pattern for the corner to corner Christmas tree skirt by Heidi Filbert. And that's what I've made. Now, to give you a bit of background on the yarns on this, um, earlier in the year, you may remember that I was given a, a large quantity of yarn. My sister had come across it. Um, that makes it sound like she stole it. It was being slung out and she saved it from being thrown away. What I did at that point was put to one side any red and green with an idea of Christmassy type things. In addition to that, I had some yarn many, many years ago. I um, got some cones and they were, I can't remember if they were eBay or Freecycle, but they were various cones of yarns. And in amongst these cones were some green and some red. Now, they were cones presumably bought for perhaps machine knitting, so quite fine weight of yarn. So I caked them together along with some gold yarn that I've got and this is a metallic gold yarn which means it's horrible to work with it looks good but it's horrible to work with so I had a cake of this yarn or a couple of cakes of this yarn and I thought I would make the skirt so I've made it on the smallish side because our tree isn't that big so I'll hold it up so you can get a sense of size and scale. If it's not big enough, I have some of this sparkly gold, green and red. Red, gold and green, red, gold and green. Sorry. Um, I have some of this yarn left. It's horrible to work with, partly because this was done before I had a spinning wheel. If I was doing it now I would ply them together so that they would twist around each other, hold together better. Um, because I just cake them together so I had the cones on the floor, put it onto a cake and they don't all kind of line up so as you're going along with it you then find you've got a lot of gold that's not got a similar length of green and red with it. It's just horrible with a capital O. But I have some of that, so if I need to make this bigger when I get the Christmas tree out, that I can do. So it's corner to corner, it's made in triangles, and it's join as you go. Now the pattern says to make five triangles so that you've got an overlap, which makes a lot of sense. But it occurred to me that you don't necessarily need a whole triangle, because then you've got I'll show you what I've done so I've just done a little kind of few rows of overlap because otherwise you're working all the way over to here which um, means you're to me it seems like you're putting in a lot of stuff that you don't need so all I did was after making four triangles I worked along the edge of one of them and then worked how many rows of that seven yep seven rows but I made each row three stitches shorter than the one before to give the same kind of effect as the corner to corner. So a, a simple little project. Uh, these are DK weight and DK weight equivalent yarns. They are all from the stash. They are bits that I've been given. Uh, there's some red in here which has got a little bit of sparkle. I hope you can see that. Not as much sparkle as these babies, obviously. Um, 
I used in total approximately 500 odd meters of yarn. Um, it is an estimation based on the overall weight of the item because this stuff, um, I haven't ever weighed it to work out the footage per or the meterage per gram. And it's, it's really not important, so I'm not going to. But I'm hopeful that this will fit the tree cover the cover the legs of the tree like I say if it doesn't I will make it a little bigger but I'm rather pleased with that and um, not too folksy nothing wrong with folksy just not for me so so that's that hello lovelies here I am at the crematorium again I've driven through rain most of the way here and when I look behind me I know that there's tinted glass at the back but even sort of behind me through that window it's looking pretty grey and overcast but looking forward it's blue sky with little, little white fluffy clouds so uh, a, a mixed day I think um, certainly the calm before the storm because we are due some pretty horrendous weather tomorrow so if you're going to be affected by that I hope you can well hopefully stay indoors but wherever you are I hope you can keep safe. So we're coming up towards the end of November I will be doing vlogmas next month so that will be a daily vlog. I hope to do it every day I can't guarantee that it really depends on work commitments there might be times when you have a couple of days kind of bunched together but um, the plan is to do it every day and to post early morning UK when I say early I mean start of the working day UK time don't know that there's an awful lot going on we've got a few things planned a few meetings with friends but not lots of stuff although um, talking with a friend this morning we are teeing up a couple of Christmas lights Christmas decoration viewings at various places locally so hopefully there'll be something festive there um yeah apart from that it's mostly working um viewers who've been around a while who have watched vlogmas in the past will know that on christmas eve i usually go to some open air carol singing with my father obviously it didn't happen last year the event is happening this year but my father has said he would rather not go he just feels it will be very very crowded and i think he's probably right and people will be singing so even though we're outdoors, um, there's still a, a perception of risk because people will be breathing out a little more forcefully, hopefully tunefully. So I will hopefully still go and see him, work commitments allowing, but unlikely that, um, well, unlikely we're not going to the carols. So that will, will be foregone again this year, but better to be safe. Apart from that, yeah, a few things lined up with friends. Mostly it's going to be me sitting at my desk, either reading ceremonies aloud and whilst I'm knitting. That actually should be knitting while I'm reading ceremonies aloud because the, the reading them is the checking is the important part. Um, or typing into my laptop. <laughs> so so uh, the daily updates will probably be pretty short. I also am going to say something controversial here. Heidi may not be in all of them. Not that she's going anywhere, but I may ju not just get footage of her every day. So I will completely understand if that means that Vlogmas from me no longer has any interest for you. I get that. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll just see how the month goes. We can never predict things. So it may be fabulous. It may be ordinary. Maybe awful. Hopefully not. But that will be next month um talking of next month where i normally post the podcast on the last weekend of the month the last saturday of december is the 25th and while realistically i could probably post it christmas day um because there are sort of pockets of time i probably won't so next month's podcast will be in that twixtmas period that bit between boxing day and new year's eve that 
no one quite knows what's going on. But as usual, I'll be recording throughout the month. It will just be posted at that point. So most of it should be um, in the can, I would say, except no one uses cans anymore. Um, and it will just be assembled and put together. And a little something for your mid-season, mid midwinter delight, hopefully. So I think those are the notices. Bit of a shorter one this month. Um, I have been doing some bits of crafting that are Christmas gifts. And I don't know if the people for whom they are being made uh, will be seeing this. So I'm erring on the side of caution and you'll see those makes next month rather than in any of the, the weekly or daily vlogs. So I think that's that. Yep, that's it for now. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Hello, lovelies. Oh, I've got very strange hair today. I have strange hair most days. Time to wrap things up. Hope everyone's okay. Uh, firstly, thank you again to all the subscribers that pushed us over the 5K last month. I have uh, done the draw on the old random do free do free. And the winner of the draw is Amanda Jane Davis. Yes, Mandy, it's you. Um, thank you to everyone who entered the draw. I'm sorry that there's only one prize to give away. Um, now, Mandy is Mandy from Mouse's Makes, uh, who was the inspiration behind my corner to corner Christmas tree skirt. So, Mandy, if you'd like to get in touch with me through Ravelry, email, Instagram, any of the usual channels uh, with your postal address. I will get your prize in the post to you and thank you to everyone. Talking of prizes, uh, the year-long make-along, I won't be drawing in December. I'm going to wait till January so I can catch up with all of the entries in December. So that will happen in January. So any accessories, please do get them in. Um, get them onto the, the Ravelry threads or email me and we'll get your entries in there so good luck with that and I am going to do uh, a little month-long make-along now last uh, December I did a, a month-long just a kind of spend a bit of time crafting kind of make-along it's very loose rules it'll be exactly the same this year um, so it's just post whatever you're crafting on. It doesn't matter if you're making gifts for other people, if you're making something for yourself. Um, yarn crafts, please. So uh, knitting, crochet, uh, spinning, weaving. If you're doing cross stitch, embroidery, that sort of thing, you know, I'm using the word yarn very loosely. But if it can be kind of yarn or yarn adjacent, that would be great. Thank you. And there will be a draw at the end of December so again I'll do that in the January podcast um, with and it's just a, a very being part of the community sort of make along um, last year it proved quite popular people just glad to to think right I'm going to take 10 minutes to craft and they would just put a post on of what they were making what they'd finished the fact that they hadn't had time to craft today, those sorts of things, because it can be such a busy month um, that it's nice to take a little bit of time out and just do something for ourselves and just give us a bit of peace, calm, kind of cool everything down. So yes, anything you're making in December, add to the December make-along. There'll be a post on Ravelry from the 1st of December. I will keep that running to the end of the month. And again, I'll draw the winner in January. The prize will be um, a skein of yarn, I'm thinking. That seems to be usually an acceptable prize. And it will just be one thread, so it's not a finished object or chatter. Everything goes on the same thread, and I'll just draw from that. So what will I be making during December? I have some gift knitting and crochet to finish which I really should have started earlier, but I didn't have the ideas for them until about 10 days ago. So usual chaos applies. Once those things are done, I have a something that I've been thinking about for a while. Now, um, 
Some of you will know that this year, very sadly, lost a lovely friend, Susan. And um, yeah, that was grim. Now, last Christmas, she very kindly gave me this, which is the Stranded Dye Works Ghosts of Christmas Past. So we have in here Christmas confetti, vintage Christmas, naughty list, gingerbread house, and zooming home for Christmas. And I realized that one of these is as rare as hen's teeth because Jude has said more than once, zooming home for Christmas will not be dyed again because it's a right pain in the seating department. So, <laughs> so I was trying to think of something to make with these skeins, kind of in honor of my friend really. Um, I wanted it to be something specific, not just, I mean, they're, they're beautiful colors. They would go with anything. You could use them as heels and toes. You could, you know, they're sock yarns, so you could use them for anything, but I wanted to put them all together and to make one project. And I'm sort of rummaging through what to make. Rummaging, that sounds very glamorous, doesn't it? I was looking at different patterns. I was thinking of perhaps a cowl or something like that. And then I came across a name. It's a pattern I've, I've not made, but I've seen, you know, many others have. And I thought the name was rather poignant as well because it's the Close To You shawl. So I'll put a picture here from the pattern. So it's Close To You. The designer's name has gone out of my head, but it's on the pattern so you can see that. And yes, I will be making a Close To You shawl with these yarns um the shawl actually uses slightly fewer than i've got here because i've got i think 425 meters here whereas the shawl is slightly um has slightly fewer meters than that but it is an adaptable pattern so you can add in another another section to to use up what you have so so that's what i'm going to be doing um if time allows I'm actually, rather than do a little bit on this every day like an advent, I'm going to try and get this done and blocked because I'd like to wear it on Christmas Day if I can. Um, I'm in the gods of the time timing here, so that may not happen, but this is what this is going to be. So that will be a lovely thing. I will link the pattern down below because if anyone wants to treat the the December make-along as a specific pattern make-along. It is a free pattern, um, so I'll put the link there if anyone wants to join in. It would also make a nice gift for someone, you know, it's a nice kind of smallish but long enough shawl, I think. So, you know, if you're looking for that last minute gift idea, there's a possibility. That, I think, is that for November. Um, yeah. That went quick, didn't it? Well, the months did. This, this podcast may have dragged. Um, yeah, just time has flown this month. And suddenly, in some ways, I've got quite organised for Christmas. I've got some gifts that have already been passed on to the relevant people. And, you know, plans have all been made. And in other ways, it's all a bit as usual. But we are like this every year. <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> I know some people are super organised and they have everything bought by January and that sort of thing. That's not me. Um, I like a bit more spontaneity than that. And that's not to criticise the people who do that. But um, yeah, that's that's never going to be me. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as we all do our own thing and don't worry about it. It's It's fine. It's fine. The important things aren't necessarily the gifts the food the whatever it's the thoughts the feelings the times um and hopefully we'll be able to spend time with people we love uh the new variant of covid omicron has been officially named over the last sort of 24 hours nice <sighs> we'll see we'll see but please everyone keep safe keep well i hope that whatever you're doing you're enjoying and that you are able to take care of yourselves and to have some fun. I will see you on Wednesday the 1st for Vlogmas if you are watching it or sometime between Christmas and New Year for the December podcast which will have a roundup of all the year's makes and that sort of thing 
but the draw for the year-long make-along and the December make-along will happen in January. Thanks everyone, thank you for being here, thanks for being wonderful human beings and take very good care of yourselves. Cheers, bye-bye.